Greetings. The Lord is with you. It's Monday evening, August 10th. And we're going to be looking at this week's scriptures. And I'm finding it under a pile of stuff. We are in the book of Isaiah, chapter 56. Hi, Mark. Hi, son. Good to see you. Hey, Priscilla. Good to see you this evening. I know you've been working a lot. I'm glad you're off. At least off this evening. And I'm glad you're working. Wait to see if we have a few more people uh, come come on. Hi, Janice. Good to see you. Maggie, hi. Hi, Donna. Hi, Carla. Hi, Karen. Wow, ah, lots of people clicking on right now. Good to see you all. Well, we're on uh, in, in Isaiah. We'll begin. I think we have enough people that we'll get started. As together we make the sign of the cross and we say, in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Hi, Shirley. Good evening. Well, Monday evening, um, I always take Sunday off. We're in worship together Sunday morning, and so I have Sunday afternoon off, and I always take Wednesday off, sort of. Um, not really off, but we are in worship at 7 o'clock on Wednesdays. And so uh, we invite you to gather us at Good Hope in the parking lot or online uh, for worship service. We are going to be looking at Isaiah chapter 56, only verse 1 this morning or this evening. And then we'll look at verses uh, 6 through 8 um, the, uh, the rest of the first lesson, we'll be looking at that uh, tomorrow. And, uh, um, well, let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for our, our group uh, that we are together in your word today. I pray you bless us as we consider a couple of questions and can begin to imagine uh, the, the plans that you have for us. Open our hearts, open our ears and eyes to hear, to see, to receive the word that you wish to plant in our lives, to see it grow and bear fruit. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, um, I'll explain in a little bit why uh, I'm asking these questions, but I, I have like one question that maybe has like three versions to it. Um, and I'm going to get my pen out and get ready to hear some of your responses. Um, how do you picture, in your mind's eye, what would it be like, uh, the kingdom of God, uh, heaven, the reign of God, here on earth, in its fullness, n not right now the partial reign of God, but the fullness of God's reign on earth as in heaven, we're taught by Jesus to pray, uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So how do you picture what it looks like in life to be in the kingdom of God, to be in heaven, or the, king, uh, the king's reign be on earth as it is in heaven? What is, what is heaven or does, what is the the kingdom of, of God look like? I'll wait for a couple of moments. Uh, I think we'll get some responses in. And um, while I'm waiting, I'm going to introduce our reading from chapter Isaiah chapter 56 by saying that this is a turning point verse in, uh, in the book of, of Isaiah. Isaiah has three well-known sections to it, well-delineated. First Isaiah, 
uh, chapters 1 through 39, written to the people before they're destroyed by the Babylonians and carried off into exile. Isaiah 2, written for the people who are in exile for that 70-year period of time. It's not quite that long, but 70 years eventually between the destruction and rebuilding of the temple. And um, so uh, words of warning in that first section. Words of comfort and words of hope in the second section. And then in third Isaiah, we have a, a, the setting for that is the people having returned from uh, exile. And, and in that setting, uh, let me get my little notes I had set aside. Uh, chapter, oh, and chapter 56 begins, chapter 56 verse 1, the one verse we're looking at tonight, begins third Isaiah. You might mark that in your Bible. Uh, you could somewhere write Isaiah uh, ch 1 through 39 is first Isaiah. Verse chapter 40 is the beginning of second Isaiah. Chapter 56 is the beginning of third Isaiah. And um, in third Isaiah, uh, the people of God are being challenged to accept their role in this grand story that will herald in a glorious future. Um, and that the goal, the, the call of God on their lives at this point is for them to live faithfully now in light of the coming future. There are words of challenge, words of hope, uh, words of, of uh, universal promise. Uh, there, there's a call for prayer and for um, obedience in, in in this life as we wait. Um, third Isaiah is very much like the period of time in which we live right now because we live between the first coming of Christ and his second coming. He's brought his kingdom of peace and grace and love to the world, but it is not universally reigning in this world. And we wait for that day when the reign of Christ, the king, and free every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. We, we wait for heaven. We wait for the reign of God in its fullness. So that question is, what would, um, what would heaven look like? What would the reign of God on earth as it is in heaven, what would be some characteristic traits of that? Uh, Mark responds, it would be beyond our imaginations. Makes me think of the Bible verse that was the uh, theme verse for our convocation for the North American Lutheran Church this last Friday and Saturday that he is able to do uh, Ephesians 3 20 and 21 God is able to do abundantly above and beyond uh, all that we can hope or imagine <laughs> uh, absolutely beyond our imagination but if we're to imagine a little bit what would be some little bits of it I agree with you Mark there's no way we can imagine how wonderful it's going to be. But if we were to imagine it from our very limited perspective, what would it encompass? Maggie says it would be peaceful. No hatred, no jealousy, no long-term illness. Amen, Maggie. Donna says, I believe that there is no time frame in heaven. Uh, it's just eternity. Yeah, I, I, under, I, I agree with that. There are many rooms for out, and no one is in pain, and people are happy. There's kind of a sense of euphoria. Of course, we, we don't picture people just walking around being happy. I, I think I also picture there being a robust activity. Um... Generally, I feel good in this life. Um, as imperfect as it is, when I've had a good day of hard work, either now I can't be doing it now with my bum arm, but um, a, a day of robust work out in, out, outside in the yard, getting a lot done, and when I, I finished up the, the mess that was there, or the a project I was working on is completed, and it looks great, and I'm, I'm satisfied. Uh, um, uh, it, it doesn't just have to be a, 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 uh, in the yard. It could be work. Um, uh, uh, 
uh, wherever we, we do our labor. But a day of good, productive work where I feel like I made a difference in somebody's life. Oh, that's a, I leave that day with a great feeling. I don't, I don't picture heaven just sitting around on clouds. Um, I, and I don't mind robust work, but work that's fulfilling. Work that you don't just feel like you're paddling along, just getting nowhere on a, on a treadmill. Uh, Maggie says that it would be, oh, I, I read that. Um, uh, Priscilla adds, there would be no tears, no sorrow, no more death. Wow. Of course, that is the promise we have in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, uh, that God is going to come and make his home with us. Hi, Bobby. You might be able to welcome this evening. You might be able to tell from some of the people on that there's a question out there I've asked for some responses to. And the question is, if you could picture in your mind's eye what it would be like to be in the kingdom of God or the reign of God or heaven, what would it be like? We understand that Jesus teaches us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If God's will and God's kingdom were on earth, just as they are in heaven, what would earth look like? What would my life look like? Um, and and uh, Priscilla pictures that, that message from, from uh, uh, Revelation 21. No more sorrow, no more death, no more mourning, crying, or pain. The first things have passed away. Uh, throughout the book of Revelation, the book of Psalms, throughout the scriptures, Karen pictures in the kingdom of God, there would be worship. I, I, I think unadulterated worship, just utter praise to Almighty God, often spontaneous praise. I, I know a number of times I, I tend to be exclamatory, stub my foot and I'll make a noise. Um, but I also do that with praise. Something wonderful happens and I just, I just say, I don't know why, it's just inside of me, it breaks out. Um, just kind of like stubbing my toe breaks out and something I ought not to say. But um, not that I go cursing much, but I, I do make negative noises. Um, but but um, when something blesses me, I, I just thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I, I, I agree, Karen. I think there's going to be wonderful worship and it'll be spontaneous. And it will be like being in the best choir. Um, sometimes it, it's nice to, to be in, in the place where all the different musical instruments are used. And, and the, the scriptures are full of instrumentation. But sometimes a beautiful choir that's singing four-part harmony without accompaniment, a cappella. Oh, what a beautiful sound that can be. Just the human voice. And add to that the wonderful instruments. It will be glorious. And to do that, all of us together praising God. Uh, Bobby pictures it as a beautiful place. Uh, Priscilla says, that beauty. So that's, a, that's a nice word. Thanks, Bobby, for sharing that. We think of what are the most beautiful things you see in this world. Um, fall colors, a sunrise, a sunset, um, an ocean view, um, beauty. Well, nothing's going to be as beautiful as, as God's kingdom. Priscilla adds, no more hate. No more wars. Laura says, joyful singing. Yes, full-throated, from the heart, joyful singing. Bobby adds in, we all would not have health issues. Amen. No more suffering. No more pain. No more sickness. Well, thanks all for sharing your thoughts. Um, I, I think we could add a lot more if we just kept in conversation. These things are all pictures of what heaven will be like. Or what will God's kingdom, when it's fully reigning on earth, what would it what would it look like? The the reason I ask this is that our scripture lesson is chapter fifty six, verse one. Um, then our assigned reading skips verses two, three, four, and five, and and continues on with verse six. Um, I I don't know. Uh, why that is. But let me read verse 1 and, and maybe verse 2. Our, our assigned reading, Isaiah 56, verse 1, 
the first verse of, of third Isaiah. Thus says the Lord. <laughs> it's always the prophetic word. This isn't Isaiah speaking. This is God speaking and has given this word to Isaiah to pass on to all of us. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness. For soon my salvation will come and my righteousness be revealed. The third Isaiah, to the people of God who have come back into the Palestine, into the homeland, into Israel, and, and the city lies in ruins, the homes are in ruins, everything looks desolate. And we, we heard in the news about a gas explosion in a home in Baltimore and three homes utterly destroyed. Um, if you saw that in the news tonight, you would have a picture of what Jerusalem looked like. Just absolute destruction. Good evening, Patty. Good to see you as well. Um, so, so the Israelites have come home to utter destruction. And God says to them in his very first word, keep justice and do righteousness for soon my salvation will come and my righteousness be revealed. God's kingdom is coming. That's the theme of Third Isaiah. That God has a glorious future for these people. And it may not look like that future. That future may look very dim right now. And that future may be looking very far. But as Jesus teaches us to pray for that future, thy kingdom, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So here, God through Isaiah is saying, live for that future that I'm going to be sharing with you. He's going to talk to us about that future in this last portion uh, of the, the book of Isaiah. Here, his words are, and these are words about this glorious future that the people are going to be called in all these verses to live into. His first word is keep justice. Do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my righteousness be revealed. He's going to have more to say in the verses we look at uh, tomorrow. Um, verse 2, which is omitted from our reading, says this, Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who holds it fast. The, the call of God is that he has a glorious future. Um, joyful singing, um, no health issues, no hate, no wars, beauty, worship, no tears, no sorrow, no death. Um, uh, many rooms for everyone to be, a place to be happy and, and out of pain, peace, no hatred or jealousy, um, no long-term illnesses beyond our imagination. Well, all those things and so much more are going to be part of it. But included in God's vision for the future will be the words of justice and righteousness. These are our powerful words. What are the guiding principles of our life? A couple of weeks ago on Confirmation Sunday, we talked about the scarcity that, that people experience and how we, we tend to live struggling just to get everything we can for ourselves because there's a limited supply of everything, which is not true in God's kingdom. He's the one with a cattle on a thousand hills. He can sell a cow and help you out anytime. Uh, he's, he's the one who turns five loaves into two, and two fish into food to feed 10, 15, 20,000 people and have 12 basketfuls left over. Um, we, we, are, we, we live our life in some direction. I, I don't know if everyone does, but I think we do. I say I don't know if everyone lives a life in direction because I think some people just kind of go through life without any vision of where they want to go or the kind of person they'd like to be. 
but that just means their vision is right at their feet. They, they have no vision beyond where they are right now. And they're just hope life will be, but, but aren't doing anything of working towards that better life that, that God desires for us. If we have a vision, the wrong human broken vision for life is self-focused. God's focus for us is, is to love God and love our neighbor. Certainly in God's kingdom, there will be love permeating through everything that we do. People will not be downcast. They will be full of peace and joy and love. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These things will be permeating our life. But, but God says to Isaiah, don't forget about these two words that will be descriptive words of God's kingdom. There will be justice and righteousness. You know the, the, the symbol for justice. You see it in any courthouse or if you were to Google a symbol for justice, it would be um, a scale. And the kind of balance scale that has two sides and you, uh, you, you put a, a one pound weight on one side and then you put whatever you're measuring until it, it balances out just perfectly. And you know this other thing weighs one pound. Justice is, is fairness. What if there was fairness in this world? What if people weren't judged based on the color of their skin, their age, their looks, their popularity, their net worth? What if people were looked at simply as people made in the image of God? Every single one. And in God's kingdom, everyone will be treated as his child made in his image. So how in third Isaiah, as we're living in the midst of rubble, and we're looking for that glorious day that God is going to, going to bring to us, how shall we then live? Well, we are called to live as if. Those two wonderful words, as if the future has already come. Christians become a light to the world, a light to the nations, by how we live out the values of God's kingdom. And one of those powerful values is justice. God cares that we treat the poor in the exact same way that the rich are treated. Judges in the law are told not to, not to side in favor of the rich and not to side in favor of the poor, but to side with justice, the individual case. Not weighing for the poor or for the rich, but just for truth and justice in each individual case. That a person's sex or their religious background or their, their financial wealth, uh, the clothes they wear, the color of their skin, these things won't matter at all. In God's kingdom, you will experience the absolute respect of God and everyone else. You won't live afraid because much of the, 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 the ideas of racism uh, are based, or, or sexism, or any of the isms that we have, are based in fear of people who are different from us. But we won't have that fear because we will look at each person as a loved child of God. I, if I thought of a person who could exemplify that in life, I I would think of Mother Teresa. She treated the poorest and the wealthiest the same. She treated someone dying in the slums of Calcutta and world leaders with the same exact respect and dignity. 
and people knew that. And the people of high repute didn't feel bad because they were really treated with respect and dignity. And they understood that they were living in the presence of a woman who was living by the values of the kingdom of God, of the coming kingdom. This word in 3rd Isaiah is really the word for us because we as Christians, as I said, live between the first coming of Christ and the second coming of Christ. His kingdom of love, forgiveness, grace has has been poured out into this world. But it is not fully here. We become a light to the nations. Uh, we need to live as Christians out of the kingdom principles so that people can see what the kingdom is going to be like. <coughs> yes, full-throated worship, beauty, love, joyful singing, uh, no more disease. What would it mean if we live now for no more disease? Well, I think we do our best to try and heal people. That's why the church has been a catalyst for the healing ministries throughout all the centuries. That's why one of the missionaries that we support, Dale and Jody Davis, that, that family, we have two families, missionary families we support, but one of them, the Davis family, build hospitals. <laughs> and they aren't missionaries like pastors or missionary doctors. They're missionary builders. And they go build hospitals. Why do we do that? Well, because we agree that in God's kingdom there would be no illness, no long-term illness. Maybe a person gets sick, but they're healed. And, and the diseases that ramp, run rampant through, through individuals, not only just the pandemic we have, but all the things that make some people more susceptible to the, the coronavirus, well, those get healed. And so in the church, we work for healing, tangible healing. We, we, we believe in justice, and so we, we, we work toward and, and pray for fair wages for employees. That maybe the, the head of a, a CEO of a company isn't making 10,000 times what, what the, the worker is making. That, but that there's some dignity. Yes, maybe he, he deserves in his position a little bit more money, but, but, well, let's have fairness, justice. And, of course, then there's the word righteousness. I'm getting close to my time, and the word righteous, I've said this many times, is, is the word zodic. It, it means to, to be exactly the way God created you to be before the fall. Um, a, a friend of mine was getting a car repaired in Israel on an archaeological dig, and when he went to pick up the car, the, the uh, repair shop owner pointed to the car and said, zodic, righteous. <laughs> We think of righteousness in terms of morality. Not whether or not I have an impure thought or I, I uh, uh, pickpocketed something from the store. No. no, the idea is that my whole life is in line with God's will. The way he intended it to be. A car can be righteous in that it's running exactly the way it was meant to run. Well, that'd be really good. Um, and, and so our cause, our life is called to be righteous. Does that include morality? Of course it does. Life is supposed to be lived like if the fall had happened, as if his kingdom has come and I'm no longer battling sin. I am called to live life in line with God's will. In my finances, in my relationships, in my work, in my care for creation, in my love for family, in my obligations to work or society. He wants my life to be in line with his will. So as we're looking at God's coming kingdom, which we all believe will come again when Jesus comes the second time, we have this word from Isaiah, which is a word from us. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness for soon my salvation will come. How should I then live? Well, live in the way that you've pictured heaven. Begin to live that out and let it be a light shining to your neighbors. Let's have a word of prayer. Uh, powerful scripture this morning, just one, or this evening, just one verse. But what a wonder it is. Thank you, Lord, for the all three portions of Isaiah. And how we live our lives in different times, but certainly we live now between uh, waiting for the coming of Christ and praying 
for the kingdom and the will of God to be done in our lives and on earth as they're currently done in heaven. Drive from this world the evils that inflict us, infect us, and cause us, Lord, as forgiven people full of grace and love and mercy to bear witness in the world of your love. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me this evening, and God bless all of you. Tomorrow we're going to be back in Isaiah 56 and looking at verses 6 through 8. God bless you, and have a great evening. Bye-bye.